Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peterisms, where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I've learned as I've grown into the person that I am today. Um, if you haven't been watching my videos recently, then you might not know that I have started a self-help, motivation, inspiration readathon over here in which every month, starting in November, um, I am going to pick a book, and you can read it along with me if you want, and then I will make a video at the end talking about what I thought about the book and how it impacted me, what I took from it, those kinds of things. Um, I love to read self-help books. I love to read. I don't necessarily love the word self-help, um, but, you know, since so many people call it that, it shouldn't get just easier, you know, to say it that way. But motivational books, inspirational books, things like that. Um, and I want to, you know, spend a year dedicated to reading one book specifically a month and really, really thinking about it. Um, and so for November, I picked the book, The Four Agreements, uh, by Don Luis uh, Ruiz. Uh, I have it right here, actually. Or Don Miguel, Miguel Ruiz. So I picked this book because I had it, and I had so many people that had recommended this to me, and I hadn't, you know, read it, and it had been sitting, like, up in my bookshelf, just kind of, like, shoved in some things, and I bought it, I don't know, a year ago or months ago, but I've heard a lot about this for many, many years, and so I wanted to read it. I heard it's just life-changing. So, a couple days ago in a video, I said that I hadn't finished it yet, but that I was going to finish it, and then I would announce the book that we were going to read for December. Um, so, let me uh, tell you what happened. I was driving around last night. I got done with my vlog, and I had actually downloaded this on Audible because it was really inexpensive, and it was like two and a half hours long. So, I thought, I'm just going to listen to it now. Well, I started listening to it last night, and I could not stop. I mean, it was that powerful. It was that simple, and it's lessons, and for me, it was that life changing. I drove around for about 45 minutes afterwards in just complete silence, just like thinking about really what it meant and the words and how it impacted certain things in my life, whether it was myself on YouTube or myself in my personal life or my marriage or with my friendships or just my goals or my perspective of the world. And, you know, it's interesting to think, and here the, the book is very, very short. It has some prayers at the end, but even with the prayers, um, the book is 138 pages. And to think that a book that is that short and really uh, that simple, it's very, very simple. It's told in layman's terms. It's not difficult to read. To think that it would have that kind of impact, you know, is really powerful. And the one thing that I really do like about it is that for me, when I read self-help or motivational books that are kind of told in layman's terms, it's much easier for me to understand and apply. So I don't like to read books that are like textbooks, you know, that are extremely difficult. It's deciphering things. I get lost in all of that. So I really like books that speak just to me. So if you don't know anything about this book and you haven't read it, let me read you the inside cover. Um, the Four Agreements. Be impeccable, and, and here they are, this is the first one. Be impeccable with your word. Speak with integrity. Say only what you mean. Avoid using the word to, and the word is your communication. Avoid using the word to speak against yourself or to gossip about others, which this, when I was reading it, was not missed on me that I have a drama channel and that's gonna be very difficult. Use the power of your word in the direction of truth and love. Don't take anything personally is the second agreement. Nothing others do is because of you. What others say and do is a projection of their own reality, their own dream. And he talks about the world that we live in as being a dream, that we're, a dream, we're dreaming when we're awake and we're dreaming when we're, we're dreaming when we're asleep. When you are immune to the opinions and actions of others, you won't be the victim of needless suffering. The third uh, uh, agreement is don't make assumptions. Find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstanding, sadness, and drama. With just this one agreement, you can completely transform your life. Always do your best is the fourth agreement. Your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different when you are healthy as opposed to sick. Under any circumstance, simply do your best. And you will avoid all self-judgment or you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. And then he goes in and he talks about how with each of these, you're not going to do them perfectly. It's just about doing your best with being impeccable with your word, doing your best with not taking anything personally, doing your best with making assumptions. Um, the book was just really, really powerful to me. And really what it was about was talking about that we live this world and we live in a world of hell, so to speak, and negativity and assumptions and all of these pre-programmed ideas that we got when we were growing up, right? That everything that we believe about ourselves or everything that we believe about the world or everything that we believe about other per people was indoctrinated into us by our parents or our family members or teachers or religion or whatever, right? And it's really about rewiring ourselves to believe what we want to believe. And at the end of the book, 
he says something, and I took a lot of notes, so I want to talk about the notes that I took. But at the end of the book, he says, um, we can see the dream as heaven or hell. Like, we can look at our life as heaven or hell. How do you want your life to be? Live a new life, a new dream. Give yourself permission to be happy. A new life. Don't live your life being judged by others or judge others. Love yourself just the way you are. Live in the state of bliss. Happiness and suffering are choices. Choose to live in heaven. And you know, when I heard that, I just was like, there are, there's so much of my life that at times, I really do choose to live in suffering or hell and complaint, you know? And that has been something that in the last year, I have really, really worked hard on. You know, it was so interesting that as I was listening to this book, so much of it, I was like, yes, yes. Like, when he talks about what awareness is the first step, and that's something that I say regularly, you know? And that I really believe that. And the last year has been such a year, and he talks so much about inventory in this book. I mean, he talks so much about doing inventory, right? And if you watch my videos, you know that I've done so much inventory in the last year and evaluation. And it's just, the book was just, it, I think it reiterated for me so many things that I needed to hear. One of the most powerful agreements for me was hearing um, to don't take any, uh, uh, don't take anything personally, you know? And he goes in there and he says, whether somebody says something to you negatively, like, I can't stand your voice or you're fat, or whether they say something to you positively, like, you're the most amazing person in the entire world, don't take it personally. It's not about you. The good's not about you and neither is the negative, right? It's what you do with it. And it's what your belief system is that attaches to that one way or the other. And it's what those people, what their motives are behind saying it. We don't know what their motives are. We don't know what their life experience is. So it's really about what you believe in yourself and about changing and breaking those patterns. I was talking to my best friend about this tonight on the phone. And she said she read it, you know, years ago. And she said, but what does he suggest about breaking the patterns? And I don't want to get into all that. I suggest that everybody read this book. But at the end of it, he gives like a three-part kind of thing. And one of it is going in there and breaking like all of the agreements that we've made with ourselves in the past. So like an agreement is a belief system that we have within ourselves. So... If I believe, because people have told me for a long, long time, you know, like, I can't stand your voice, your voice is girly, you know, your voice doesn't match who you are, whatever, and I believed that, and that agreement with myself is that there is something wrong with my voice. But over time, I can start to change that, and I have, you know, like, YouTube has really helped me with that when people are like, I love your voice. Well, now I know that's about them, it's not about me, but what it's done is it has allowed me to start saying, my voice is part of who I am, it's a major part of who I am, and my voice is me, and I like my voice today, right? And so that agreement is starting to change into a new agreement of me loving my voice and loving those parts about myself. And it's funny because he says in there at the end, he goes, every day tell yourself that you love yourself. And I say that at the end of my vlog every single day. I say that. Look in the mirror and tell yourself you love yourself. And I'm such a firm believer in that and positive affirmations and having to believe those things about yourself. But it's hard, right? Because if you really are honest with yourself, like I was on it, like I am trying to be honest with myself. These things that we believe, you know, when we talk about it being hard, it's because of our belief system, not because of what everybody else is saying about it. It's what our belief system. And basically, he says this thing at the end. Um, he says, the absence of fear is love. If you feel love, you won't feel anger and jealousy. So if you, like, look at somebody and they're, like, saying things about you or talking about you, right, and what, and you're, you're, you live through love, what you'll say is, well, maybe they don't know any better, you know, or maybe they're going through something right now, and I don't know what that is. I don't know what their motive or their intention is to talk about me that way, right? So, but you look at it through a point of love. Well, jealousy and fear can't live in a state of love. So if you if you live your life through a point of love, you can't live in jealousy and fear and envy and anger, right? So then that doesn't enter anywhere into your spectrum. And if you live in love, then you live in happiness. And he goes on and he says, um, everything about you, everything isn't about you. You're happy because nothing upsets you. If you feel good, there is no place for those negative emotions. Thus, you feel good and your life is happy because you live, love yourself. And that's what it's really ultimately about is loving yourself, right? And then he goes in here at the beginning. He says, um, whenever we hear an opinion and believe it, we make an agreement and becomes part of our belief system. This is where I started taking my notes. Um, and it was like, I mean, I had to pull over like 50 times last night to take notes. But you know, that's so interesting. It's like if somebody has an opinion about me, right? And that's strikes and he goes in later and he talks about that and that strikes a chord with me because I'm like well is there truth to that like you know I feel that way about myself anyway so if somebody says to me um 
you know, like, oh, well, you know, you're fat. And then I'm like, I already feel that in myself. Then I take their opinion and I choose to believe it. And then not only do I believe it and I start making myself suffering and punish myself for that because he goes in and he talks about abuse and things, but that we abuse ourselves more than anybody I've ever possibly could because we relive it over and over and over in our head. And, um, you know, so that whole idea is interesting to me of believing that somebody else's belief system and then that person that had that negative opinion about us to begin with, we've already put them up here and we want to start listening to that person because we believe them, because we respect them and we don't even know what their motives were for us in the first place, right? And so it's about always going back to ourselves and believing what is best for us. And I just was like, this is so poignant. Like this is just, this book was just so powerful to me, you know? And um, one of the things he says in there that I really, really liked I don't want to get into the rest of my notes. But he talks about human beings the only, being the only creatures on earth that do something and they like continue to be punished for it over and over and over and over again. And this really, really hit hard for me, okay, in several areas of my life. Um, that, you know, if someone does something and like, and we punish them for it or they punish us for it or whatever, like we can't just let it go and move on. And he was talking about like animals in nature that make mistakes. It's like, you know, like if they do something, then they get punished for it and then they move on. It's not like it's brought up again and again. And he was like, when we have spouses, when we have family members, when we have friends that remind us of that mistake over and over and over again, we continue to punish ourselves over and over and over again. And they continue to punish us for it too. What's the point? What's the point in doing that? You're not living a happy life if you're, in, if you're putting suffering on somebody else or you're choosing to suffer yourself. And I was like, that is really, really powerful, right? Because how many of us have gone through something where somebody wronged us and we want to continue to bring it up again? And again, and again, and again, and again. But they're suffering because they're being put through it. True. But aren't we also suffering because we're bringing it up and we're not allowing ourselves to move on? And I think that's really what he was saying. Because all of this comes back to us is what he was talking about in the book. Um, and then he said, when someone says something that hurts you, it's because they said something you already believe to be true. So, you know, and I thought a lot about that. When, when people say things, you know, and that have hurt me in the past, it's, be, it's not because maybe how they said it or who, who they are, because half the time it's people that, you know, in the world that like maybe I just met or I don't even know, right? You know, but it hurts because, um, because like it's... <laughs> personal to me because I already believe that statement to be true, whether it's because I've been told that over years and years and years and that agreement has already been, you know, cemented in my head or because I, you know, have just something I believe about myself anyway, right? And it's about changing that and loving yourself enough to know. It was interesting, the thing that he said at the end, he talks about these Toltecs in there, okay, and that it all comes from kind of their wisdom. And he said that you become like you, the third part of changing all of this is basically like being reborn, okay? Like killing off these old parts of yourself. And he said that, um, I like the words that he used. He said, you're not born innocent again like a child. You're born wise, wild, and free. And I, and I loved those three words together. I think those words describe how I would like to live my life. Wise, wild, and free, right? I mean, who wouldn't? You know what I mean? So I thought that that was interesting. Um, and then he goes in here and he talks about forgiveness and he said, forgiveness is for us. Okay. Not because they deserve it, which I think that that is interesting because that almost kind of goes against some of my belief systems that I had before that maybe they do deserve it, you know, but he says in there and he goes into it. He's like, people do stuff to us that they don't deserve forgiveness for. Um, you'll know you, you have forgiven them when you see them and you have no emotional reaction. And as soon as he said this, like four people's heads came into my head and I was like, this is so funny. Like I have literally like when I see them or whatever, I have like literally no emotional reaction to them whatsoever. And I was thinking about that there are people that I have prayed for. I have prayed for the resentment to be removed. I have prayed for the anger to be removed. And it has been, you know, and I see them today and I'm just kind of like, hey, it is what it is, you know? And I thought that is so powerful that because I didn't really know like when have I forgiven somebody, right? But I guess I have more than I thought I had, you know? And I don't know. And, and then he says in there, you know, that they have no effect on you anymore. And that is why forgiveness is for you because forgiveness is for, for us. If we forgive somebody, it's saying, I no longer want to put myself through the suffering of being angry and resentful. Therefore, I want to forgive that person so that I can let them go and they can be out of my head and I can move on, you know? And I, and I think that's freedom for ourselves. Um, 
And then he talks about a warrior in there and he's talking about the Toltec warrior and he's talking about a warrior is somebody that changes who they are and they are fighting those inner agreements. And the two personality traits of a warrior are number one, awareness, and number two, control over emotions to be expressed at the right moment. And what he's saying in there is not that um, you shouldn't be emotional, but that maybe we reserve our emotions for the right moment. And that, and you know, I think sometimes when we say emotional, we always just say, we think sad or crying, but emotional emotions are anger, you know, hurt, betrayal, um, you know, uh, joy, uh, enthusiasm, uh, happiness, you know, there's a spectrum of feelings. If you don't know, there, there's like hundreds of feelings, go look them up on Google, you know, that you can like pick which feelings you feel for the day. And I think that that's it. It's about feeling the appropriate feeling at the appropriate moment, you know, and, and, and not like becoming overwhelmed with emotions and then making decisions in our life based on emotions. And I have definitely done that in the past. And so then he goes in and he talks again about, you know, see the dream is heaven or hell and happiness and suffering our choices. Choose to live in heaven. I want to choose to live in heaven going forward. I want to choose to live in happiness, you know, and I've really worked hard every day, you know, that I get up and focusing on, you know, prayer, meditation and daily affirmations. And this book was so helpful to me in very simple ways of just looking at the world, you know, and, um, you know, using my, my word impeccably. And, and it, it's, it means it has a different meaning than how it sounds. So you have to go in and read the book. Um, but it's really just about being authentic to who you are, being, you know, authentic to using your voice authentically, what you mean in your heart. It doesn't mean being a perfect person. That's not what it means by any means. Um, but it means in like, what, how are, why are you choosing to use your word? What are you choosing to do with it? And then the second one, you know, is um, that nothing is really personal. Don't take anything personally. Don't take anything personally. It's not about you. It's about that person's makeup and what they have to say and what they have to do and all that kind of stuff. That was really freeing for me. And then don't make assumptions, which I think is, you know, something that I wish all of us could do more of. I'm including myself, especially and he, you know, he says in there, he's talking about this husband and his wife, and he said that this, something to the, I can't remember what it is, it's like flowers or something, but the wife is upset because the husband doesn't bring her flowers, but then her, he doesn't meet her expectations, and so she assumes he doesn't love her based on the fact that he doesn't meet these expectations. And he said, you know, our assumptions lead to expectations, which lead to us, um, hurting people that we supposedly love. I think it's those exact words that we disappoint or we hurt people that we supposedly love. And I thought about that all the times so that I have miscommunicated to people. And he goes, just ask questions. Just state how you're really feeling. You don't need to beat around the bush. I was like, okay, wake up call, Peter, wake up call. You know, like I've had people say that directly to me, you know, uh, my husband said that to me at times, you know, just say what you're, what you mean. Like, let, let's not beat around the bush. Let's just say what you mean. Right. You're, we're going to get there a lot quicker, you know, and there's so much truth to that, you know? And so, and then the last one is doing your best and all those things moving forward. We're not perfect people. None of us are. We're not going to ever be perfect examples of ourselves, but we can aim to be better. We can aim to do our best in everything that we do. And he even goes in there and talks about don't try to do better than your best because then you're exerting energy that you don't have. Just do your best. And I thought that was really good. So I gave the book a five out of five. I absolutely loved it. It was really life changing for me. And I really wanted to read another book that was kind of inspiring like that. So let me tell you what our December book is going to be. Okay. Um, let me pull it up on Goodreads. I already have it picked, uh, pulled up, but I'm hoping that it's still there when I open the app. It is. Okay. Um, so I got sober December 17th of 1994. Uh, if I make it there this year, cause that's what we say in sobriety. Um, we don't borrow time. I will have been sober 25 years. I got out of treatment in January. Um, when I got out of treatment, um, I like enrolled in school right away and I was doing all this kind of stuff. And one night um, I got this book and the book was The Celestine Prophecy by James Redfield. And I got the book and I read it and it literally changed my life overnight. And uh, I don't really remember what it was about the book that changed me. But I knew at that point that I, could, I, I couldn't be in school right at that moment, that I needed to focus on my sobriety. I literally went to two to three meetings a day. Everything that I did was about sobriety and about recovery. I wanted to change as a human being. I wanted to change as a person. I wanted to take a look at myself. I wanted to grow as a human being. I knew it was time. That for me 
more than being in treatment, more than everything that happened to me, that moment of reading that book, and I remember I stayed up till like eight o'clock in the morning reading it in my apartment, that moment for me was a moment of clarity unlike none other that I was like, things need to change now. Well, I haven't read that book in 25 years, and it came out as a movie a couple years ago, and I remember I was gonna start watching it, and then I like watched like the first five minutes of it, and I was like, oh, I don't know what I think about this. So there's three or four books in the series. There's like uh, The Celestine Prophecy, The Ninth Insight, The Tenth Insight, and I don't know that I ever read the other two. So since it is the anniversary of my sobriety coming up, I thought, well, I think it's appropriate to read this book. I wanna reread it. I haven't read it in 25 years. It was also one of my mom's favorite books. And so we're gonna read it, and here I'm gonna put the cover up for you right here. This is actually a new cover. The old cover is just all green. Um, and I'm going to listen to it on Audible because I read it the time before and I kind of want to see what the Audible version is because here's the deal, right? So it's about these insights, these lessons that you learn, but it's told through a fictional story, which, and it's kind of this adventure story. So, um... The Celestine Prophecy contains secrets that are currently changing our world. Drawing on ancient wisdom, it tells you how to make connections among the events happening in your own life right now and lets you see what is going to happen to you in the years to come. A book that has been passed from hand to hand, from friend to friend, since it first appeared in small bookshops across America, The Celestine Prophecy is a work that has come to light at a time when the world deeply needs to read its words. The story it tells is, gripping, is a gripping one of adventure and discovery, but it is also a guidebook that has the power to crystallize your perceptions of why you are where you are in life and to direct your steps with a new energy and optimism as you head into tomorrow. Um, and the book, let me tell you when it came out. This will be interesting to see. Okay, I stopped the camera because I got in here just like looking at the publishing date and there were several different publishing dates and I was like, what is going on, whatever. So um, I finally found the original publishing date and it was 1993. So this book came out a year before I got sober or two years before I got sober. And um, so... Anyway, it has been 25 years since I read this book. I'm really, really excited about reading it. I hope you guys will join along. Um, let me know what you think about uh, this book is our choice. Let me know what you thought um, about the Four Agreements. If you read it, put it in the comment section below. If you haven't read it, it's not too late. It's a very short book. Um, I would highly, highly recommend it. It was really profound for me to read, and it really made me think about my life overall in many, many different aspects, and just made me think of so many things of how I choose to live my life and most importantly do I choose to live in heaven or do I choose to live in hell and I, I think it's a, a, a very vital question to ask ourselves on a daily basis anyway I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow bye